Good morning, church family. This is Pastor Jonathan. Happy Monday, and uh, welcome to today's Daily Devo. As we continue to work through Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, we come to what has been uh, one of the most impactful passages uh, for me for a long time. When I was in high school, I battled anxiety. And uh, I don't really remember the circumstances. I think I was trying to just get this passage into my soul, maybe even commit it to memory. I, I honestly don't remember. Uh, funny how that works in it. But I remember sitting in Miss uh, Vicki Fowler's senior high government class uh, writing this passage over and over in my notebook, uh, verse by verse. I would write it in print. I would write it in cursive. Uh, and I distinctly remember uh, just pouring over these words because for someone who has a tendency to worry uh, or be anxious, uh, these are very comforting words uh, from, from the mouth of Jesus, our Lord, uh, but also challenging. And so we're going to see what these words have to tell us today. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like any of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things. But, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. This is Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 34. And uh, what I want to talk to you about today is what to do before you worry. Before you worry. Uh, so here we are, uh, first thing on Monday morning. Uh, if you're like me, uh, this is not technically the start of your day. Uh, your day is probably already started like mine, but uh, it's still early enough to pause and to check in and to look toward the rest of our day and especially the rest of our week. Uh, and do something before we notice the tendency to begin to worry. Uh, anxiety is the compulsive need to be doing uh, because we are feeling insecure or we are worrying about what will happen or what will not happen. Um, psychologists and counselors also call this obsessive compulsive disorder, <laughs> right? Uh, we obsess over things and we compulsively move towards action because uh, we're fearful. We're fearful. Uh, we're feeling insecure. Uh, we're worrying. And Jesus says that before you do that, consider. Uh, and, and one thing I love about this is it's an, it's an incredibly affirming passage, isn't it? Uh, I mean, uh, listen to how Jesus describes the birds of the air, and, and they don't worry about their food, and yet, yet your Heavenly Father feeds them. And how much more valuable are you than they, right? I think of that song, His Eye is on the Sparrow. And if His Eye is on the Sparrow, then I know He watches me. I know He's concerned about me. If He's concerned for the birds and the grass and the flowers, uh, things maybe that I even overlook, uh, then how much more attentive is my Father to my needs? What an encouraging and an affirming word today. But then Jesus says, don't worry about these things. Seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness. Seek first. So that, that means not just before, not just towards the top of the list. I mean, at the very top, before you worry about anything else, before anything else, seek first God's kingdom and God's righteousness. Do you know where peace comes from? Uh, when you live in a society run by a king, peace comes from the king having established a peaceful kingdom. That's it. That's the, that's the definition of peace if you live in a monarchy. Well, if God is king, then true peace comes from God rightly sitting upon his throne and rightly establishing uh, a kingdom of peace in which you and I get to live. 
So while we know that there are all kinds of things going on that are not part of the kingdom of God, that might even be in total opposition and rebellion against the kingdom of God, if you and I live in the kingdom of God, and we recognize that God is on his throne, and we order our lives accordingly, then the result of that is provision. It is peace. It's a deep sense of trust. We kind of talked, this, uh, talked about this in the sermon yesterday. Uh, but we, we ask ourselves, um, you know, is this really worth my concern? Uh, how much does this really matter, in other words? Or is this really mine to control? Uh, and if it's not really mine to control, is this something I need to surrender to God? Do I need to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness? And what's amazing to me is Jesus isn't just saying seek God's kingdom and God's righteousness before you add a bunch of things to your life, before you buy another car, or before you go add cable so that your family can be entertained, uh, so you can watch plenty of TV. No, he's talking about basic necessities before you even worry about food, before you even worry about clothing or what you'll drink. I mean, these are not superfluous things. These are not extras. These are the basic foundational needs of our lives. And Jesus is even saying, before you worry about those things, seek first God's kingdom and God's righteousness. Wow, what a challenging word. So I would invite you as you begin this day and as you begin this week to just ask yourselves prayerfully, what does it mean to seek God's kingdom and God's righteousness before anything, even so much to the core of my being, so much to the core of the orientation of my life that before I worry about what I'll eat and what I'll wear, I'm seeking God's kingdom and God's righteousness. One thing that I challenged us to do yesterday uh, in the sermon as we worship together, uh, which, by the way, that video can be found at our Facebook page and also our website, also our YouTube channel at Robert Stell UMC. Uh, but one of the things that we did at the end of the service is we prayed together the serenity prayer. The prayer of serenity uh, can be found on the Celebrate Recovery website, celebraterecovery.org. It's a prayer that's often attributed to Reinhold Niebuhr. And my challenge to us was to actually pray that prayer once every day this week, whether that's in the morning or in the evening. So I'm just going to pray that now and invite you to pray it with me. And uh, no matter when you're watching this video, whether it's morning or evening or even the next day, this prayer is good for us right now in this moment. So let us pause. And before we sign off, let us take time to seek first God's kingdom and God's righteousness, to surrender to him and give him control. Would you pray this with me? God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. The courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time enjoying one moment at a time accepting hardship as a pathway to peace taking as Jesus did this sinful world as it is and not as I would have it trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next. Amen. God bless you today. This is Pastor Jonathan. Grace and peace.